So if you were born in 1700, and uh, please uh, excuse me at that time, somehow women were not very uh, high up in the hierarchy of, of uh, Western societies or societies in many places. So I'm going to focus on a young boy in the 1700s who decides that he is going to go into, uh, let's say, make a duck. That's the best place to earn a living. If he was, okay, what would he do? He would go and apprentice himself to a guild, work for a master, pretty much a slave labor for multiple years, and over the course of those years, would learn how to make a gun. And at the end of it, one day the master on a whim would say, okay, you're trained. And then that person could become a guild. So we made stuff, we did not manufacture stuff. And I'm going to give you three metrics we're going to be looking at. Productivity, how productivity changed over time. What happened to quality? So how much of the work was reworked? How much of what you did got reworked and cleaned up? And how many products you created? In that world, you know, we have been, since we are looking at productivity as a change, there is nothing. Everything had to be reworked. And you focused on one product. Or you focused on making something else. But it was that one. 1793, a fellow by the name of Henry Maudsley uh, is a foreman at an arsenal in England. And he suddenly decides, this is really crazy. I am going to take a straight plane, straight surface, and a micrometer, and I'm going to put it in the middle of my workshop. And to help with the masters, any worker can go and check his or her dimension, his dimension. He did that. You see what happened? We'll come back to why it just happened. Productivity went up 400% compared to the last period. Now only four out of five products had to be reworked. Little later, in America, gun makers in America said, you know what? We're going to do the same thing, but we're going to have these nifty little things called go no go gauges, and we're going to introduce those. And by the way, for the first time in human history, we're going to introduce outsourcing. Not in the 20th century, but close to the turn of the 18th century. Okay? And this is what happened. Then we had to wait for a period of almost 100 years. And uh, right here, in the Watertown arsenals for most part, Frederick Winslow Taylor, uh, Henry Gant of Gant Charts, they all created what is called the, the scientific uh, methodology. And once that got introduced, again, you see what happened to uh, productive inequality. Yeah. Okay. Fifty years later, you go to Japan, and they come up with lean. That's what happened. 30 years later, as computers are really beginning to take place, this is what happens. So what happens now? A period that I'm going to call that. The reasons will leave out. If you look at those numbers, what do you think is going to happen now? number of products that can be produced by any group of people to rise because you're largely now relying on software. It makes you enormously innovative because you can, you can flexibly introduce stuff. This is the world that we live in. And you're going to see, you're seeing the beginnings of these huge rises. And we are struggling with how to deal with them, just as we have struggled with this. You know, when uh, this, when, when uh, Lean came in, I'll keep talking about Lean because that's something that many of us can relate to. I also 
just talked about the fact that you can't get this done unless there's organization in the 